in the chat and see if I can see you and you can see me. And we'll see what happens here. This is just sort of spontaneous. I'm at the last day of the Mount Dora show. So when I see some people come in here, we'll uh, start to uh, talk here and show you what's going on. You can see some people milling around behind me. It's a nice, low, easy day. Sunday is our last day, so it's kind of our discount day. And, uh, well, I see somebody gave it a thumbs up, so I guess someone's here, and that's great. And what I'm doing is I'm going to be getting ready to pack here. We have to start packing in a couple of hours because I'm at the Mount Dora Antique Extravaganza. It's been really great. It's been a really good show. Cat the Nurse Flipper is around here shopping, and I've had a whole lot of viewers come, which has been really fun. I've met probably 25 different people. And uh, hey there, everybody. I see people coming in, Crystal and Deb and uh, Kristen. That's great. And uh, Draga, nice to have you with us again. And I am here in Mount Dora, Florida. It's just at high noon here. And I am looking around my space. I might have to stop and help somebody here or there. Hi, everybody. Hi, Trina. Hi, Zeno. I'm glad to hear that you can hear me. Um, I may have to stop and interrupt to help people here and there. Hey, Rob. But I'm going to flip the camera, and mainly what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you my space, because I'm not going to video my space much for the video of the show. I'm going to video other people's stuff. Hi, Pamela. And so I'm going to show you what I have in my spot. Uh, like I said, I might have to interrupt to help a customer or two. But I would like you guys help with um, something as I'm showing you stuff. Uh, I'm not going to be able to follow the comments too well to do this, but if you see something you really like here that you would like to see in a live sale, I'm going to be doing some live sales uh, coming up pretty soon here for Christmas shopping for people because I'm not doing any shows in December. So if you see something that you really like and you think you'd like to have me put in a live sale, please send me an email to the antique nomad at gmail.com. And that way, when I'm packing out later today, I'll look at those emails. And if there's any specific things that you were looking for, I will set those aside and we'll have those in a live sale for you pretty soon. Hi, Bree. So with no further ado, I'm going to flip the camera and I'll show you some of the stuff. Hi, Denise. I'll flip the camera. I'll show you some of the stuff I've got. And like I say, if you see anything that you really personally like, then uh, please let me know and we'll set it aside because I'm going to be having live sales starting uh, probably the first week of December. And we can get things out to you in time for uh, holidays. So I'm going to start at the front of the booth where it's nice and sunny. Well, no, no, you know what? I'm going to start on the shady side, come to think of it, because the sun's coming and going, and it may come and go. So this is the booth. I've had a very good show. I did sell a lot of stuff. I always bring Disney because we're near Orlando here. This is Mount Dora, Florida. So I've got the Mickey Mouse rotary phone, which I think is really fun. And uh, I see some more folks coming into the chat. Hello there. Um, there's a couple of dwarves. I always buy the stuff that says Walt Disney Productions, the older stuff. Oh, gosh, Annette, it was so neat meeting you this weekend, too. I met so many nice people. I think I had two dozen viewers and other dealers, some of whom said they'd never done shows here or they hadn't done a show before. And it was just so exciting to see new people getting enthused and involved. Uh, let's see, some more Mickey Mouse here. I've got the little picture frames, Mickey and Minnie there. And I still have a bunch of old cameras. These are mostly 1950s range finders by good German companies like Voigtlander or Kodak in America here. Uh, but I also have the old diaphragm cameras, uh, a couple of those. Now this for a younger crowd, believe it or not, this little doll sells for about 100 bucks. The poor stuffed doll from corn that band 20 years ago when they were still a thing had an album called issues and i think you had to get these at the concerts and boy they sell for like a hundred dollars now can you believe that the newer vintage collectible stuff is a whole realm now if there's somebody you would like to lock up for the holidays i have a nice pair of cuff, uh, handcuffs here so that could be useful Oh, thank you very much, Zeno. I appreciate you, you putting that in. Uh, yes, the video time would really help because then I can go back and look and see what you're actually uh, interested in. Hello there. Hi. Uh, that is a neat dartboard set. And actually, I can show all of you folks. I'm, I'm live streaming with some people, so he's going to open it up for us to see. 
Yeah, it's got the darts in it too, and um, it's early seventies. And I uh, I was asking a hundred and a quarter, but I could do a hundred on it if you decide you like it. Perfect. Thank you so much. If you folks have questions, let me know too. So I've got lots of little stuff in cases, and sometimes these make good stocking stuffers, and you know, there's stuff that uh, you might recognize something from where dad worked or something that somebody collects. So let me know if any of this uh, grabs your attention. I've got everything from fishing lures to old beer advertising, although I sold my little beer bottles. I've got the Tommy Lasorda signed baseball here from the Dodgers. I thought that was fun. And then this is new to me and oh boy, this one will definitely get some attention. The, this, these were done in Russia. That's Bill Clinton. When you open it up, you have Monica Lewinsky, Jennifer Flowers, and the very last one is poor Hillary. Um, so that's a comic thing they did back in the time. This little cup is oval team. This is 1930s with little orphan Annie for advertising. These are cute. And I've got a bunch of troll dolls, but these are the original ones. These are dam troll dolls. D-A-M. Thomas Dam of Denmark was the person who originated these. And so when you heard someone say, oh, it's just a damn troll doll. Well, that was a joke from the time. Made in Denmark by Dam. These are the original and these are the ones that are more valuable and collectible. I've got some cute ones by Russ from China, um, just because they were in the same collection. I don't usually buy the Chinese, but I like Dracula. But you notice the feet, it's a different color. It's just a different thing. The little kangaroo caddy is a cute thing from the 50s. I had a very nice viewer come on Friday, Elizabeth from Canada. Elizabeth Pritchard brought a couple of pieces of Glow Hill because I really like this stuff. I'll show you another piece around the corner. These are Cherry Bakelite. They were made in Montreal from the 40s to, I believe, the 60s. So kind of after our Bakelite in the USA. But here's another example. This really nice. They did this great chrome. It had an Art Deco look. And then you got the Cherry Bakelite on it. So let's see what else we have here. Hey there. Uh, oh, you're interested in the exit sign. I could do 20 on that. Uh, the business loop I could do, uh, I was asking 30, I'd do 25 on that. That's from the old interstate highway system. Uh, sure, I can do that. So this gentleman is buying that exit only sign over there. Yeah, it was interesting to me that one it apparently wasn't used and they must have left it in the bottom of the stack because it got warm, but they never put a business loop number on it. Some nice red resin grapes here. <laughs> Out of 20, thank you. Let me get you some change. I do a YouTube vlog and I just happened to go live because we were kind of quiet and I knew I would immediately get busy as soon as I did that. So one, two, three four, five makes 20. Thank you very much. Enjoy that. Okay, well, thank you, folks. I just have to do business here because the people who are here came here to see stuff, so got to take care of them first. But um, anyway, so I've got the Hager couple. I think this is really neat in the silver glaze. The Madonna, I don't know who did that. I think she's Italian. The white stretch glass, that's my last piece of stretch glass. That is Fenton's hobnail, believe it or not, in milk glass. But back in that time, they were seeing that everyone liked swung vases, so they did some too, and I think that's actually a really neat one. Okay, let's see here. The candlesticks, they're newer, but they're Romeo and Juliet, and they're not brand new. I think they're about 30 years old, 1986, actually 35. So they're actually old enough to be vintage. And if you need help with anything else, please interrupt me. I'm, I'm here to help you too. I thought the, uh, the blue Blanca, oh yes, that's a very pretty, that steel blue with the daisies. It's interesting about these. I've got the three daisy and the two daisy. The single daisy is actually the hardest to find because back then they would make them by just cutting the rims off and cutting it down. And then they throw the, the rest of the glass back in the uh, batch. And so uh, they would just cut them down. Well, cutting this down meant you wasted two thirds of it. So they didn't make very many with the one daisy. The one daisy is actually the hardest one to find. And I see that uh, Crystal Stevens says she's got some of the Fenton swung bases in the white. I think it's a great color. 
I thought this was a neat cordial set for holiday entertaining because it's got all these rich colors. These are 1960s vintage. The fuse glass butterfly is newer, but I just think it's cool. Hey, how are you? Oh, would you like to give me money? Thank you. I appreciate it. That sounds great. Are you going right to the bank? No. Okay, I was going to say, anytime Wednesday or after is fine. Sounds I gotta, great. I just got to get to the bank Wednesday. Oh, I understand. No problem. It's going to take me that long to get through my business this week. <laughs> So you get to get the side chat, too, because we're all catching up with each other. That's a dealer friend of mine who got a very nice oil painting on Friday, and um, he's paying me now, so that's nice. Uh, let's see. Resin grapes. We've got a pair there. Uh, we've got the amber down here and the red up here. That's a Blanco bowl it's sitting in. And let's see here. I got a bunch of stangled birds. The big and complicated ones still sell for 135 to 200 and some, depending. So I've got two of those. I've got that one, and I have the blue jay here. And then you'll see a bunch of the smaller stangled birds as well. This statue here, it's heavy. It's like concrete. It's Austin product. And down here, we've got some more stangled birds, a bunch of the Franklin mint fish, which are just from the late 80s, but I think they're really pretty. Here's the Fenton set. This is from their 100th anniversary. They only did this pink for one year. Again, it's one of those shades of pink that really is hard on the kilns because of the chemicals you have to use to make that. So they did it as a special edition. This I just got here at the show. This is uranium glass, and it's a trunk face, so it's going to be early 1930s or late 1920s. I thought it was really great. It just practically glows in just sunlight, so you can imagine under a black light what that's going to look like. Down here, we've got some pieces of Torquay pottery. The Valona star heart-shaped dishes, I think, are a cute little stack. I just got this. It's one of those singles that you look through. It needs to have the leather reattached, but that's from about 1900. That came from the estate of a jeweler in town. Oh, yes, I do think the vase is very cool. Thank you. I, I like that one, too. I thought that was really neat. I'm surprised I still have this swirled Murano bowl. Hey, Daniel, got to go to work. Well, I, yes, getting up at the crack of noon, I know it's rough. I had to get up really early every day. I can't wait to sleep in. There's a bunch more fish and good morning to everybody who's sending greetings. I got the wall phone recently. Some of these little clubs and battle axes are Maasai. They're African pieces as well as the carvings here. I still have this last piece of Weller Lore Beak. I feel badly because a customer wanted the wall pocket and I said she could have it. And then it turned out it sold when I called the mall it was in. But I do still have the 1930s Weller Lore Beak flower frog and centerpiece. You can see the ink stamp on the bottom. Orange Bowl is California Originals. And this is a lamp, an actual lamp that lights up with the windmill there in chalkware. I just got the sailing ships here. Oh, I do love the flower frog too. Hey, Sandy and Otto, how's it going out there? I hope it's not raining so hard in Washington like it's been. The bookends are really nice. They're new art from the 1930s with the trunk up. The elephant was supposed to be good luck. So a lot of people like that at the time. I've got bongo drums if you want to take those to the... Um, sports events with you or a drum circle on the beach. That's what a lot of people do down here. I've got several new Yadro figures. I've got the Olympic Sky, neat little Herman Miller clock here. And let's see, after we get past the seagull, which is Bing and Grondel, and another really cool Murano bowl, we get into some other Yadro here. The goose girl, the girl with the lamb, this gal sitting with the bird is very sweet. And then the musicians, that one's a little more unusual. You don't see that often. And we're getting near New Year's, so I always start buying cocktail sets. Yes, ooh, drums. Yes, I love the drums. I'll spend a minute so showing you some jewelry, but first I'm going to show you the haul from today. Here's some pieces I bought this morning. This little milk box glass. I haven't seen this one before. It has dragonflies impressed on the lid. There's no mark. I don't know who made this. I found it interesting that it had all this detail on the inside of the lid where you don't really see it that matches the outside. So I think it's a well-made piece. 
And it looks like 1940s or 50s, but I'll have to do some research on that one. If you folks need any help, let us know. Okay, I'm at the Mount Dora Antique Show in Florida for those folks who are just joining in. So I'm going to have to talk to some customers here because I am here to sell to them. But it was a nice, quiet uh, morning, so I thought I'd start by showing you stuff. These are from India. They're fairly recent vintage, but they're starting to have some age, and I've been looking for the more interesting shapes and designs, and I thought that was nice. This dance flower frog, it looks like a flower frog. It's actually a candlestick holder for taper candles. It's got the dance mark on the bottom. It's early for them. They're worth about $25. I paid two. And uh, yeah, the jars aren't those fun. It's got all the stuff in it too. Uh, I would do 85 on the set of jars. The last set I sold, I actually got 150. I mean, they're just really wildly popular now. This piece is Crown Devon. And it's the rouge that you usually see with the Royal Winton, but Crown Devon also did this rouge background. I like the sailing ship. It's got a nice mark. I've only really started looking at Crown Devon, and I'm realizing it's really good quality. It just doesn't have the word royal in front of it, so it hasn't gotten its due in the marketplace, but I think it will because it's very, very well made. The girl reading is interesting. Yes, I think she is too, actually. She is being in Grondel. There's the Danish mark on her. Hello, Vernell. It's nice to have you with us. I've got a couple of wave crest boxes. This is a large one. This is a smaller one. The large one needs a pin in the hinge, so I'm going to lift it up. But the good news about that, and you can see it's on somebody's inventory list here. No, they had a note in it. Oh, yes. Made by Monroe Company, which is true 1880s to 1890s. Made from milk glass, opal glass, where poured into molds, and sometimes it would say wave crest on the bottom. This one happens to, the smaller one does not. This Kurok tray, this was another find this morning. I can't believe it was less than thrift store prices. You can shop at big antique shows like this because some people just come to get rid of stuff. So I'll tell you, if you're in the neighborhood, it's a great place to shop. I'm going to show you the jewelry as best as I can. I do have some interesting pieces. I won't stop and linger on any too very long, but if you see anything you like in here, I will be putting jewelry into some of the sales I hope to do in the first part of December. So if you see a piece that you like, you can tell me the timestamp. Again, send any requests for things that you see here to theantiquenomad at gmail.com. And anything that you suggest would be something that you'd like to see in a live sale. We will get into one because I'm going to do several. I do have one gold cocktail ring. I sold most of my gold and silver, though. There are tiaras. So, if, you know, if you're a princess or want to be one, there's your chance. I do want to point out this here. This is Chinese with this filigree. Yeah. And Chinese jewelry is actually becoming rather popular as costume jewelry. It's 1920s Chinese jewelry. And then I'm about to show you a whole bunch of Bakelite after I show you all of this uh, copper jewelry here. Lots of little costume rings. But here's the Bakelite. Well, it's Bakelite slash dive watches. I've got a bunch of dive watches in here. I also have Lucy Van Pelt the Republican elephant, and Spiro Agnew. So depending what side of the political aisle you're on, there's something for everybody. These two little brooches with the multicolor here. Oh, yes, the Native American-looking necklace is actually costume, but it does look like a squash blossom. I think it's by the Goldette Company. And I'm sorry, you're asking if something is white or blue, and I just don't know which piece you mean. So if you want to timestamp that, I'll respond to you as well. These are Celtic jewelry pieces from about 1970, and the Celtic jewelry made in Scotland tends to have lots of different types of semi-precious and uh, stones in it because this was the way that they liked it to look. So there's that. Oh, yes, hello, Nate, and good morning. Actually, good afternoon. I'm in Florida, so it just hit afternoon here. More dive watches. And then here is what we have in Bakelite jewelry at this point. I think the stretch bracelet is really cute. Let me get out or you can, there, I get out and 
take my shadow away, you'll get a better look at it. Bakelite swizzle sticks are pretty cool here. Still have the Pin Master wristlet. And then I like these Murano glass winning cake little earrings here. I've got some opera glasses, a few nice compacts. Then I'm going to pull back here. I just got this this morning. This is Burwood, believe it or not. Did the big horses. And I thought I would take that to Kentucky unless someone who's viewing says, nope, I'd like you to put that in a sale and then we'll do that. This mirror is signed. I'm looking for any of these 1980 mirrors that are signed. This is signed in the corner. They are starting to sell well. I still have some paint by numbers. A Sears action gymnastics set so that your Barbie can keep that impossible figure that she was made with. And there's a signed Miss Saigon poster. Let's come to this side and we'll show you a little bit more. I definitely have more. I've got a lot of stuff, although I've sold a ton here. I've got signed yo-yos. I've got cigarette lighters. Lots of cigarette lighters. Advertising ones particularly. Pocket knives, a nice car clock. You can see this was meant for a car dashboard. In the old days, you'd just stick these in and this would stand out under the dashboard so you could wind it. Perfect for the holidays, lots of red Bakelite flatware. I just got the egg scale and the thermometer there. And if your kids grew up in the 80s or you are an 80s kid, you might remember this John Wright from 1986 when dinosaurs started to become really popular. This is a big, heavy, American-made, it says Dinosaur Park. And when you turn it over, it tells you what you're making. So you can make little cookies and bake goods in the shapes of Stegosaurus, Proceratops, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Of course, now they say Tyrannosaurus Rex doesn't look like that. Ankylosaurus, that sounds like something that would bite your ankles, looks like an alligator to me. Triceratops and pol Polycanthus. So for you folks who are really big on the dinosaurs, that might be for you. I'll show these. It's not New Zealand. Sorry, Nate, it's as close as I can get. But I do have these, which are a set of um, placemats from Australia based on Aboriginal bark paintings. I'll show you a little bit more art. There's the Genesis panel. This painted in Italy. This is actually sort of a factory painted piece, but I think it's a really good abstraction. So it's not a ton of money, but I think it's neat. Just got the silver plate flower frog here in the lotus shape. I thought that was really nice. This is, hello, how are you? Nice to see you. I'm actually live right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, but uh, take a look around and please uh, interrupt me with any questions because I'm just going to do this a few more minutes. I'm just showing everybody what I've got and I've got just the back wall here and Perfect. I will then be uh, free to help you. Okay, all right, no worries. These are Bikoi. We've got the silver and the red. Those are unusual. It's a very common piece, but unusual colors in this case. I like her. I'll take her out in the sun. This is Royal Dalton's Flambe. It's the first piece I've had in a long time, and this is the geisha. She's very pretty. And again, like I said, I'm going to be packing up here in a couple of hours because we don't have lights out here, so we have to be packed and out of here before dark. So if you see something that you like and you're interested in me having it in a live sale, I'm going to be doing a bunch at the first of the month, and any of these pieces could be put in there for you to buy. This is neat, it's the coronation of George V and Queen Mary. And it is a decanter from 1911. And here's egg coddlers with them on it. Queen Mary was quite a collector. And thank you, Nate, I do like that piece of flambe. I think that is really cool. This might be nice for Christmas. It's Viking glass, the little red compote. And we've got the Lennox here, a bunnykins, Salt dip set. We've. I've, I just. I've had a really fun time buying things lately. I'm sure I'll be getting more, but uh, in fact, I know I'll be getting more this week. So there'll be things you haven't seen. I will show these two paintings. Believe it or not, these are both Florida Gulf Coast artists. Uh, Firestone, the one on the right, was from the north, so that's why you see a covered bridge. I think it's very painterly. 
The one on the left is Robert Hodgel. That's a real up-and-coming mid-century artist. He was from Bradenton, Florida, and this piece was done in 1974. He's being shown at the St. Pete Fine Arts Museum. That piece should be worth about $1,500 now. And they are holding a really pretty Fenton piece. So, And there's Goofy, and with that, well, gosh, um, I'll flip the camera here. So that is the short version of the things that I have for sale here at the show and what's left. If there's anything you saw that you liked, I will be doing live sales soon. If you'll send me an email to the antique nomad at uh, gmail.com with your request and a timestamp, I'll go through when I'm packing later and I'll put those things aside because I will be doing live sales soon. In the meantime, it was fun to show you this. I'm not going to be doing much about my space in a regular video because I got to do this for you live instead. So thanks so much for joining me. And now I've got to go because I've got customers. But it was really good to see all of you and take care until the next time. And now I have to figure out what I do to end this. As much as I hate to do it, I'm going to have to do it. So let's see. This is the fun part where George figures out how to make the camera work.